This is the aerodynamics of the Ford Puma 2021 World Rally Car, and it's one of the first of its kind because before this type of car, rally cars looked very different, like this. Most noticeably, the rally cars became hatches instead of sedans. How did that affect its aerodynamics? Let's find out. Here we have a simulation of it at 72 kph. I'm not sure if you noticed the discrete rear wing system, but we also tested this car without it to see how much of a difference it made. We'll cover those results after these ones. It might not seem like it, but this car is an aerodynamic powerhouse. For example, you might look at the front and think, oh, it's so big and blocky, so like the drag will be huge, don't like. And that's true. But the main reason why the front is so big is to get enough cooling to the engine because rally car engines are some of the hardest working around. So yes, there is very high pressure over a very large region at the front, but it's kind of necessary for the engine to perform well. However, the hood of the car is excellent because it handles a highly skewed flow from the front without a hiccup. It just continues nicely to the front windshield. Now, one major disadvantage is that the flow has to accelerate so much over the front, which drops the pressure and increases the front lift. That's not good. But there isn't much of a choice here given how big the front is. So given what they had to work with, they've done a really good job. Perhaps one way to reduce this low pressure would be to bleed some air into this region through the hood. That would allow some of the flow to not have to follow that path and reduce how much it has to accelerate, hence the pressure would increase. The junction between the front windshield and the hood is just too angled though. We can clearly see the flow decelerating a lot, and that comes with a high pressure zone. While that is good for downforce, it is bad for drag, and the reason why this comes about is because the engineers wanted the car to be as compact as possible to make it more nimble. However, they could have blended these two regions more. The junction is just too sharp. The flow over the windshield is great though. It recovers nicely and feeds air into the roof mounted intake. Over the roof though, there is a significant problem. You can see just how large the boundary layer is growing. This is largely because as you go over the roof, the pressure increases and that higher pressure decelerates the air and causes the boundary layer to thicken. Usually that is pretty bad. Here it's even worse because this air is feeding directly into the rear wing system. This system is crucial for the car to perform and it's seeing slower moving air. What's more, you can see the rear window has a small lip at its start. That needs to be rounded because the small lip is making it hard for the sluggish boundary layer to stay attached. So it separates and now the wings see separated flow too. Not good. At this point and really everywhere, you want to make it as easy as possible for the boundary layer to stay attached. Having this bump doesn't help. So the rear wing will perform worse now. Moving to the underbody, they did a really nice job at the front. You might look at this square front and golf because it clearly isn't aerodynamic. It's very blunt, but that's more for strength because you are going to hit twigs, rocks, and who knows what else. So you can't have a typical delicate splitter or even air damp. This square splitter works pretty well still. You can see the air accelerates underneath it and that translates into very low pressure and hence downforce. However, one possible improvement is to round the front into a bump because we see that the flow separates big time over it. Rounding it would reduce that and increase the downforce produced. Despite that problem, the rest of the underbody performs pretty well. It doesn't have the best flow to work with, and perhaps given how much this thing jumps around during a race, this flow is much more indicative of what it would usually see. So the underbody is doing very well. We still get very good low pressure. The diffuser seems to be the most impressive thing on this car because it shoots the air through and dramatically drops the pressure. This diffuser is better than most supercars and it is working with worse flow. But when we look at the car without the rear wing system later, we will see something really interesting. Just keep that in mind. Now, between the wing and the large rear of the car, the wake is horrendous, but one silver lining is that we see just how aggressively it shoots up. That tells us that lots of downforce is being produced. That's good. And downforce production almost always comes with a drag penalty. So it's a necessary evil. From on top, we see the pressure in this plane and the really good news is that there's a lot of high pressure on the top of the two elements of the rear wing and the flow from underneath is very low pressure. So we can say qualitatively that it is producing a lot of downforce. But as a minor point, we have local flow separation around the eight pillars. That could be alleviated by rounding them more. It's not a big deal, but it could be the difference between first and second. And if you ain't first, you're last. From these streamlines, we also see that some of the problem is that so much of the flow from the front peels off and wraps around the eight pillars instead of continuing straight over the roof. Guiding that flow more would reduce that separation too. Now, perhaps my favorite thing about this car is that over the rear wheels, they have these contours shielding them. Why? Well, it has to do with the dynamics of the car. They wanted to have a wider rear wheel base, but they also wanted to reduce the frontal area of the car for aerodynamic purposes. So the wider base is there and to shield the rear wheels, they have these contours. How effective are they though? Well, the white lines show the flow over them, and I would say that they were super successful because none of that flow gets pulled into the enormous wheelhouses, which are enormous to accommodate the large travel in the suspension. So that was done really well. But one thing that should be improved upon is once the contours end, the white lines get pulled down aggressively. That eats into the downforce. Alternatively, they could have kicked the contour up at the end to shoot the flow up. That would add to the downforce instead of taking away from it as it is now. I'm not sure if they tried it, maybe they found it messed with the rear wing system. I doubt it. 
but it is a complicated region here. This drag orbit shows huge drag coming from the rear. That is a combination of the rear wing system, the hatchback rear, which is starved of the float from the rear wing, and even the rear diffuser to some extent. Subjectively, it is the overwhelming contributor to the drag. The wheelhouse drag is overshadowing the rest of the drag usually produced from the wheel regions. But that is to be expected because the wheelhouses must be so big, so there's just a lot of empty space there. Maybe they could try putting something like memory foam in there to take up that space, but still allow the wheel to travel inside. I don't know. The drag coefficient comes in at 0.51, which isn't surprising after seeing the drag orbit. The lift coefficient is awesome though, coming in at minus 0.14. So at 72 kph, it produces 27 kilos of downforce, so the drag penalty was worth it. Now much of that downforce and drag comes from the wing system. What happens when you remove it? Does the car now become streamlined? Here is its simulation. Immediately, the rear flow structures are very different. We obviously don't have the flow shooting up around the rear wing region, but look at the flow over the diffuser. Remember how good it was when the wing was there? Now it's marginal at best. Why did it perform so much better with the wing? Well, that's because the wing was producing a massive region of very low pressure, and that sucked the flow over the diffuser, so the rear wing was improving the diffuser's performance. From this pressure plot, we still get some low pressure in the rear, but not nearly as much as before. The rear wing is still bad here, and we see the flow separating. This is just a classic case of it being too sharp. If rounding that edge is out of the question, then maybe putting vortex generators on the back would help. Either way, the rear wing is being negatively affected by a fairly fundamental mistake. The rest of this plane is largely the same still, so the rear wing's effects are mostly localized to the rear. From the top, without the wing, the wake is much smaller and I really like how rounded the C pillars are. That dramatically reduces the wake of this car and hence drag. I mean, that rounding does come with low pressure zones, but those zones are largely isolated to the faces that are mostly in the side force direction, so the drag and lift are not affected. So that's a nice touch. From these streamlines, we can see that without the rear wing, the top half of the car is acting pretty good. There is still a wake, but it dies out very quickly, and the flow over the top zooms down. That will also come with increased lift though. This drag orbit is funny because we still get a huge drag reduction from the lower half of the car, but the top half is now really good. Without the rear wing system, the car's drag coefficient drops to 0.38, so 130 count reduction, but the lift coefficient rises to zero. So all that downforce of the car is now gone. The rear wing was directly and indirectly responsible for all of it. That is how important rear wings can be. So if you have a rear wing on your car, I want you to go out right now, hug it, and tell it how much it means to you. Peace out, amigos.